So in this video we're going to be looking at question 2.18 from the textbook and it's looking at back and indirect titrations. So for question 2.18 of the uh, Essentials book for chemistry, uh, it says that in order to determine the percentage of ammonia by mass in a particular brand of household ammonia cleaner, the following procedure was conducted. So we have a multiple step process that we have to look at and analyze in order to actually calculate the percentage of ammonia. So first off we have 8.170 grams of the household cleaner being placed in a volumetric flask and diluted with a volume of 200 milliliters there. We then take a little 20 milliliter aliquot of that solution, uh, probably using a pipette, and putting it into a conical flask. And then what we do is we have 20 milliliters of a known concentration of hydrochloric acid solution being added, and we have a equation for the reaction there. The last step was to determine the amount of excess hydrochloric acid, because it was in excess in the step before. And uh, what we're told is that we are actually titrating it with a set of NaOH, which is uh, sodium hydroxide, using the brewette, and we're able to find an average titer value. And again, we also have an equation for that specific reaction too. So first question is to calculate the number of moles of sodium hydroxide in the average titer in step 3. So we're working backwards, we're starting at step 3, because we want to work out how much hydrochloric acid was actually in step 3 and how much was in step 2, because from that we can actually work out what happened in terms of the reaction with ammonia and hydrochloric acid. So by working backwards we are no we know our sodium hydroxide concentration, our sodium hydroxide volume, because they were both given in step 3, and we've plugged them into our equation, n equals cv, respectively. As you can see, I use the average titer value there, so it's very important to be able to pick up the language, and it's 9.45 milliliters, so I've converted that to liters, just by obviously uh, considering how many milliliters are in a liter. Of course, there's a thousand, so I need to account for that in the calculations. And what I end up with, and I write it to three significant figures because that's uh, what I'm able to write it with if we look at the previous numbers on the other slides, and uh, we get 3.78 times 10 to negative 4 moles. So we've got the number of moles there of sodium hydroxide, and from this we're asked to calculate the number of moles of excess HCl remaining from step 2. So we're looking at essentially how much HCl needed to react with that NaOH in that final stage. And the answer is, well if we look at the equation, if we go back to the equation here, oops, for step 3, we can see that NaOH and HCl both have a stoichiometry coefficient of 1. So as a result they're in a 1 to 1 mole ratio. And so essentially what we just found in terms of the number of moles of sodium hydroxide that react in step 3 is also the number of moles of hydrochloric acid that actually react in step 3, which must be the amount that was remaining from step 2. So, of course, the remaining number of moles is 3.78 times 10 to negative 4. Relatively straightforward. Again, we're just considering the back titration process. So we start off with heaps of hydrochloric acid, we reacted all the ammonia in it, we have some hydrochloric acid left, so we just decide to title that with sodium hydroxide, and of course, it obviously makes sense that if we look at the mole ratio, we can see that we're going to have that much HCl in step 3. So now we're asked to calculate the total number of moles of HCl added to the flask in step 2. So of course this is going to be an excess amount. Not all the ammonia would have reacted with this amount of HCl. Uh, sorry, not all the HCl would have reacted with the ammonia. Again, we can use N equals CV because we have a concentration, we have a volume, and from this we get 2.70 times 10 to negative 3 moles, which again is more than what we have in step 3. We need to calculate the number of moles of HCl that reacted with the NH3 in step 2, and the best way to do this is to consider the difference in the number of moles, delta N. Uh, so in order to do this, we say, well, okay, we have the amount that was in step 2, 2.7 times 10 to negative 3, and obviously the amount that reacted must be what didn't react in step 3. So, so we subtract 
what reacted in step 3, which was 3.78 times 10 to negative 4 moles. As a result, we find out that the number of moles of HCl that reacted with our NH3, our ammonia, is 2.32 times 10 to negative 3 moles. From this, we can calculate the number of moles in the 20 milliliter aliquot of diluted house cleaner taken from the volumetric flask. Of course, we know that it's going to be equal to the number of moles of HCl in step 2. And the reason behind this is, again, they're in a 1 to 1 mole ratio. If we go back to step 2, our balanced chemical equation shows they clearly have a stoichiometry coefficient of 1. So therefore, for every mole of ammonia that reacts, we have 1 mole of hydrochloric acid reacting. And because the aliquot is what was actually reacting with HCl, that little 20 milliliter sample, we can say, well, okay, the number of moles is, of course, going to be the same. But if we're asked to calculate the number of moles of the ammonia in the 200 milliliter solution in the volumetric flask, then we need to multiply the volume by 10. So essentially, we take that 2.32 times 10 to negative 3, which is in our little aliquot, we multiply that by 10, because of course we have 10 times the volume. Uh, 20 mils compared to 200 mils, it's pretty easy to see. So of course we're going to have 10 times the number of moles in there, 10 times the amount. And it's essentially just a change in the order of magnitude. So we go to 2.32 times 10 to negative 2 moles now for that 200 milliliter sample of solution. And again, you're probably wondering, well, why do we have to do this step? And the answer is, well, that 200 mil of solution prepared in the volumetric flask is very important. So if we go back to the very first step, we can see that the 8 grams of household cleaner was placed in that 200 mils. So if we want to determine the percentage of ammonia by mass, and the ammonia is in that household cleaner, then we need to actually work out what mass out of that 8.170 grams is ammonia. So of course we've got to consider that 200 milliliter solution, not just a little aliquot, which was actually used in the titration in step two. So now what we can do is we can use the value for the 200 milliliter solution, not little aliquot, again, just because uh, we obviously know that we have 8.170 grams of household cleaner in that 200 mil. And from there we can use the formula N equals M on M. So again, we substitute N as being 2.32 times 10 to negative 2. Then we substitute in the molar mass of ammonia, which we can find using a periodic table. And it's three lots of the um, molar mass for hydrogen, which is 1.008. And then what we do is we add on the molar mass of nitrogen, which is 14.01. From there we get our mass. By rearranging the equation, we multiply the molar mass by the number of moles, and we find that this is 0.396 grams to three significant figures. So that's our mass of ammonia in the solution, but we're asked to find the percentage mass per volume. Simple enough to do. So essentially, the percentage of ammonia by mass in the sample, we have that 0.396 that we actually worked out on the other slide, and we uh, have that divided by the total mass of our household cleaner that was in the 200 mil solution. And that is obviously 8.170 grams. So what we end up with as a fraction, as a decimal, is 4.84 times 10 to negative 2, but of course we want it as a percentage, so we need to multiply by 100, and as a result we get 4.84% to three significant figures. And that's how we'd go about doing a titration like that. So as you can see, we didn't necessarily know how much ammonia was in that household cleaner, however by actually titering with a value, uh, with a certain amount of HCl that's in excess, and then actually uh, working out how much ammonia there is, and then working out the excess HCl, we're able to work backwards, and that's in essence why this process is very important, because we can work out things like the percentage of ammonia by mass. We can work out quantities that we would not necessarily be able to directly calculate if it weren't for methods in analytical chemistry such as this one. Hopefully that made a bit of sense. Thank you for watching.